What if you could turn your voice notes into organized and actionable ideas without even having to lift a finger? In this video, I'll show you exactly how to automate your voice notes into Notion, even if you've never touched automation software before. Here's what we'll cover. All right, so first, how do we send a voice note using nothing but a shortcut on your iPhone, right? It's as simple as tapping one time on your screen and record it. Second, we're going to look at how to use AI to transform raw thoughts you just speak into your phone into actionable ideas, stuff like content ideas, business plans even, or just raw brain dumps. Third, we're going to look at how to save everything inside Notion so you never lose a content idea ever again. By the end of this video, I'll actually give you all my templates for free. But I highly recommend that you stick around for the next 10 minutes or so because I'm going to show you exactly how to customize these workflows and prompts so that they actually work for your brain, not for mine. Okay, the way this works is actually super simple, right? I've got my home screen right here and I've got this little shortcut. I simply tap on it and it opens the options for me, right? What type of note is this? And you can configure that yourself, right? So these are the categories I most often use, but you can change them to whatever you want to choose, right? So I'm gonna record a business idea and I'm gonna keep it intentionally short just because I don't wanna waste your time. Um, so I've got this business idea about a voice to notion automation. And so what happens now is all this data gets sent to make.com and it will be transcribed by Whisper. And then we're going to use AI to actually turn this into something usable. If we go into my Notion right now, we should be able to see the new voice note inside of here, right? So this is my voice note hub, let's say, right? Where I take my daily notes and I'm gonna share this template with you as well. But if I open the voice note, you can see right away that we have a summary right here and I can change the status to in progress. And um, it says the focus areas are business ideas, content ideas, generating scripts, etc. So it actually got that right. Um, here's the original voice note, which is pretty short. I usually take like three, four, five, sometimes eight minutes voice notes, send them to this automation and it creates amazing stuff for me, right? So if we scroll down further, we see we've got ID expansion. We got the core concept. We got revenue streams because it's a business category, right? Uh, we got the target customer profile, implementation steps, potential, potential challenges, um, the unique value proposition. Maybe that's interesting. Transform your voice notes into organized ideas effortlessly, save time and saves time and enhances creativity through seamless voice capturing, translating spoken thoughts into structured notion entries. That's exactly what it does, right? Um, even got a quote, the best ideas come from hang having a lot of ideas. I love that quote and it fits perfectly into this, right? So if you scroll down further, we actually also have a distribution and action plan, right? So phase one, idea validation, phase two, prototyping, phase three, community engagement and feedback, phase four, launch, preparation and marketing. And that's pretty much it. It even suggested some content repurposing. I mean, this is, this is literally insane. First, what you want to do is you want to open shortcuts, right? And this is a tool you can use to automate things on your Mac, which is pretty, pretty cool, actually. Um, I'm going to share this exact shortcut with you by the end of this video, but I'm gonna walk you through how this actually works. So first of all, we create a list of items and these items are gonna be the items for the categories we're going to use, right? So we've got business idea, to do, content idea, brain dump and journal. These are the categories I use most often, but you can change that if you want to by adding a new one, for example, right? Random idea as a category, let's say. This we will have to adjust in the workflow itself later on, but I'm gonna tell you once we get there. So next what happens is, this is basically this list of steps that the automation is going through, right? So the second thing right here is to choose from the list we just created. So I, as a user, 
tap the category, right? Next one is that we will record an audio, right? And we have some settings here. We can um, increase the audio quality. I realize that I don't really need very high quality um, for it to be transcribed. And I wanted to start the recording immediately. You can also um, start it on tap, but I usually find that annoying. I just want to record the idea as soon as, as fast as possible, right? Next step is we're going to get the current location. And this is obviously not essential to the automation, but I like to keep track of where I record these voice notes just because that's something I did in my journal as well. And then this is the, the only thing you actually have to adjust, right? So if you open this up, um, we are taking all of that information, right? The category, the current location and the audio and we're going to send that over to make.com. Now, the make.com link right here is what you will need to adjust, and I'm gonna show you in a second how. But what, what you can see right here is that we send the file, we send the type, and we send the location. And these keys you're gonna find in the next step as well. So if you need more context on how make actually works as a platform, and other automation tools, um, you can feel, feel free to join the community, right? Um, I've got this crash course about make.com in here. We've got some other courses as well. And I've got plenty of projects that I've been sharing with templates, um, how to use DeepSeek. <clears throat> you can, by the way, you can use DeepSeek as, um, for this automation as well, which I am definitely going to test and share a template inside the community. So feel free to check that out. All right, so let's continue with step number two. For this, we're going to need make.com. Um, it's an automation platform to automate pretty much anything in a quite user-friendly way, and it's affordable too. There are plenty of alternatives, right? Um, you can use Zapier or N8N for that as well. I just found um, make pretty, pretty affordable and um, widely used for these kind of things, right? So if you go to pricing, for example, you can see that they have a free tier. Um, feel free to sign up using my affiliate link down in the description um, at no additional cost. I just get a quick little cut from that um, to support the channel. Really appreciate that. Anyway, once you registered, you're going to land on a screen like this and you are going to create a new scenario, right? <clears throat> and what you want to do is you want to import a blueprint. So down here at more, you are going to click import blueprint. You're going to choose a file. I've already got it prepared right here. And once I save that, it's going to give you this uh, big automation, right? Don't feel overwhelmed by it. It's, it's actually pretty simple once you get the hang of it. So what you want to do now is basically you want to click on webhook and you want to create a webhook, right? So you add one, you give it a name, you click save and you copy that address to the clipboard because that's exactly what we are going to insert into our shortcut, right? So that's what you want to insert right here and then save that and you're good to go. Now this information is actually going to be sent over to this webhook. Now it's currently listening for us to send some kind of information. So let's actually give it a try. Um, I'm going to choose a business idea and hopefully it can hear me through the other microphone, but this should send a voice note. So now it's going to send something to the webhook and it just lit up green. So this means we successfully determined the structure, right? So perfect. This is cool. Now the first node is ChatGPT. Now, if you don't have a ChatGPT account, I highly recommend you create one right now. So you simply go to, um, what is it, platform.openai.com and um, you're probably going to be prompted to create an account. So once you have that, you go to dashboard, you go to API keys, and then you create a new secret key, and then you give it a name. You can restrict the permissions if you want to, but I would simply keep it at all. 
And um, then you get a key, you copy that, you go back to your automation, right? Um, you click on add a connection, you insert that API key, you insert your organization ID, which you can find at, let me see, organization ID, probably, there we go, right? So under settings, you'll find your organization ID. You paste that in as well, and you've got a connection. Now, I've already got my connection, so I'm gonna keep that as is. And you've got nothing else to do in here, right? Um, the model is simply Whisper 1, which is the transcription model by OpenAI. And we're gonna save that. Now, the next one is actually more important. So in here, I have context about my business and personal stuff as well as content preferences, right? And I've left that empty for you to adjust it to your needs, right? So maybe if you, if you have a website, you can um, ask ChatGPT to summarize your business, right? Um, you can use your LinkedIn data to summarize it and so on. So this is really important to give the AI some context about what actually is relevant for you personally, right? And that's pretty much it, right? So what happens next is we are going to write a summary. That's what's going to be inserted at the top of the Notion um, page, right? We're going to generate a title and then we have these routes right here, right? So this one right here is a router and it sends data into a different direction based on criteria, right? So the first one is this one right here. Um, if it's a content idea, we're going down that route, right? So if it's a content idea, we're actually going to expand on the content and we're going to write an intro script. Just because um, sometimes I have content ideas, right? And I don't want to, um, and, I, and I like the fact that um, AI can simply help me by preparing a, a script for me while without me actually having to do anything about it, right? So in here, as you can see, we're using GPT-40 and you can switch that to anything you like, right? Um, but I found this to be exceptionally, exceptionally good. Um, you can also use um, GPT-40 Mini. That's a lot cheaper, but um, it's, it's just a distilled version of GPT-40, right? So next we're going to write the intro script same procedure, we've got a prompt, we use GPT-4.0 and so on. And then we create a database item. Now, for this, you'll actually have to see, understand how Notion connects to, connects to make.com. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna click on add a new connection and then you're going to choose internal and then you need to insert your internal integration token. So if you don't have a Notion account, um, well, sign up for one. It's basically free. You can, I'm paying like, I don't even know how much I'm paying, like five bucks a month or so, like almost nothing, um, just to get unlimited storage, which is insane. Um, anyway, once you're registered, you can go to this link right here, um, notion.so slash profile slash integrations. I'm gonna insert that in the description as well. And that's the place where you wanna create a new integration, right? You click on integration, you choose your workspace, you keep it as internal, you can add a logo if you want to, and you click on save. Oh, we forgot to add a name, right? Um, YouTube test, and then I'm gonna save that, and I'm gonna configure integration settings, and that's it, right? We've got an internal integration secret right here, and we can simply show that for a second, copy that, go back to the make automation, paste that in, and then we have it, right? Um, now, unfortunately, this is not all you have to do, right? Um, so once you have that, you actually need to tell Notion to share the page you wanna, you wanna use for that, right? So, what you'll need to do is you go to Notion, you go to the 
the daily notes hub, which is inside the templates as well. So you can actually use that. Um, you click on the three dots right here and then you click on connections. And that's where you can now choose your, your new connection, right? So mine is actually make.com, make notion connection, whatever, right? So I'm already connected, no need to do anything here, but you'll need to activate that in order to um, make this page available to make, right? And then you have it. Now you should be able to um, actually select from a list of um, databases. Um, sometimes you have to query, query um, the name of it, right? Um, so this one is um, semi-automated something. Hopefully this is gonna pop up. Oh yeah, it got it already, right? Um, and this is pretty much it. You don't have to change anything in here. Now you just have to um, change the connection for, for the Notion nodes. And that's pretty much it, right? Um, I'm gonna walk you through one more, which is the business idea route, right? So if the type of the voice node is equal to business idea, we actually go down this route. Now, what happens here is we have an idea expansion again, and then we have this built-in public node, which I created, just to have another thing um, for me to create more detailed business ideas, right? So I gave it a role, like a experienced product marketing strategist, right? Um, blah, blah, blah. And I've got this huge prompt. And then I added the context we defined at the beginning of it, right? And the transcript. And the output is, well, you've seen it. It's pretty cool. Now, one more thing to keep in mind with this um, automation is I added a lot of um, error handlers right here. And the idea behind it is that um, you can simply have it, because sometimes OpenAI simply has a server outage or something, right? The server's down, so it's not responding. What happens then? Well, with this um, error handler right here, um, you can have it retry sending the data uh, for a number of tries, right? In this case, it's three times, um, and it waits 15 minutes between the attempts, which is pretty cool because this um, yeah, saves me a lot of headache. Now you basically have the make automation done. What you want to do is if you, if you plan on adding a new category, like we did before, you want to add a new branch and you want to add a filter. So you simply click on that connection right here and say condition, um, the type of, um, the type of voice note equals to, what did we say? I think it was random idea. Right, so we're going to call this random idea. And now you can add to it, right? And I would encourage you to simply copy and paste all these nodes so you don't have to do it all manually, but you could potentially do something completely else here, right? Maybe if it's a random idea, you store it in a Google Sheet or you send it via Slack to someone or you send an email based on that, right? Um, but so you basically simply continue building that route and it's gonna, it's gonna only go down this path is if the filter equals to true, right? And that's pretty much it. You can add as many OpenAI nodes right here as you want and take all that information and store it in your Notion. Mm -hmm.